Greetings to everyone. Welcome to the show. My name is uh, Josue Boloa, the international one. We are going to do English version to also uh, make uh, the English speaking people comfortable to know what we really talking about concerning uh, uh, the news um, kicking our country DRC, uh, Democratic Republic of Congo if you can still call it such a way, Democratic Republic of Congo. I uh, thank uh, everybody, and if you want to participate in this show, you are more than welcome. Very soon, the numbers will be appearing on our screen. So as we know, we are going step by step toward uh, December 2018, especially on the 23rd, whereby uh, we are going to experience the election. Obviously, we know and we are sure the election is going to take place, and we are not so sure if uh, all the preparation are going to be uh, taken place. So in order for us to understand who's going to be in or out, at the highlights, we are having uh, Moise Katumbi, who was uh, in exile for about uh, year, many years, as long as, um, as well as uh, Senator Jean-Pierre Bemba, the made uh, back home in Kinshasa, and Moise Katumbu, he's supposed to be back uh, through Katanga, but for now we are not really sure whether he was in or not, so we are going to talk about it here in, during the show. So I'm also honored to welcome on the show uh, President uh, Kilele, as usual, as we know, is one of our um, analyst politics, is also a president of political party in South Africa in Johannesburg. With him, we are going to discuss and have some thinking about uh, the two uh, people, Moise Katumbi and uh, Jean-Pierre Bemba, returning home to DRC. They want to be uh, the president uh, of uh, DRC all over the world. You are more than welcome to question us or to post your comment. Let's go to the second person who returned home, Moise Katumbi, who's been uh, the former uh, governor of uh, Katanga, <clears throat> Ilibumbashi. But uh, <clears throat> some uh, uh, controversial uh, opinions, some uh, interruption coming from the government are, are in place. They don't want him to return home. But as, 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 as we know, he just stopped there by the, the, the border. So up until today, we heard, according to the report, that Moise Katumbi couldn't access uh, Kinshasa, I mean uh, Kat, uh, Katanga. He might be back uh, to, up at the moment, uh, in uh, Ndola, in uh, Zambia. What is your, your view about Moise Katumbi returning back home? Uh, that just that, first of all, the government wanted him to come, but at the moment, at the last minute, they stopped him through the military forces and police and so on. First of all, uh, we must say something. Mm. We must say something about uh, this uh, Moise Katumbi, uh, the, the current president and owner of the mighty Congolese football club, Tupisama Zimbe. Mm. The international community should know that Moise Katumbi is not an opponent to the fake Joseph Kabila. Himself, Moise Katumbi, publicly declared that mm. until his death, he will never betray uh, the fake Joseph Kabila. He said it publicly. Whatever he's doing, him and Joseph fake Kabila is masquerade to mislead the public and the international community. Both are friends, best friend in crime. Okay. And all the crimes they perpetrate in Congo uh, profit them. It is on their advantage. Briefly, let us explain to the people what happened. The fake Joseph Kabila once was approached by Moise Katumbi, the time he was a governor in Katanga. Both killed 
the former governor of Katanga, whose name was Katuma Mwanke. Moise Katumbi betrayed Katuma Mwanke to Joseph Kabila, informing him that Katuma Mwanke was planning to kill him. Mm. Consequently, the fake Joseph Kabila instructed Moise Katumbi to kill Katuma Mwanke. How? I think the international community learned uh, some years ago that a private jet which was transforming, I mean transporting some Congolese officials, ministers, etc., mm -hmm. crashed somewhere in Congo. This was not true because Katumba Mwanke was killed in Katanga by Rwandans under the instructions of Joseph Kabila with the complicity of Moise Katumbi. Why? Because Katuma Mwanke was the director of cabinet, of office of Joseph Kabila. He received a delegation of a powerful Arab country, which I will not name here, who needed strategic minerals, that is uranium to start manufacturing um, atomic bomb and other strategic weapons that they wanted to possess so that they could defend their country. Mm -hmm. That delegation in Kinshasa was introduced to the private advisor of fake Joseph Kabila, that is the late Kotuma Monkey. He received them and they proposed to pay multi-millions US dollars mm -hmm. to buy uranium from Congo. Mm -hmm. The late Katuma Mwanke approached Moise Katumbi because the deposit of those minerals are mostly found in Katanga mm -hmm. where he was governor. He told him, my brother, if at all we could get hold of this money these people are, pro, are, pro, are proposing will, be, will become a superpower and will buy weapons to kick out Rwandans. You know, we are working with them, but they are not Congolese. People like Joseph Kabila is not a Congolese. Moise Katumbi accepted that they would cooperate, mm -hmm. but in return, he approached fake Joseph Kabila to tell him, look, the guy next to you, mm -hmm. your private advisor, is trying, is planning to kill you. Look what he has proposed me to do. Wow. Joseph Kabila said, okay, if such is uh, the, case. the case, I want you to chop his head and bring it to me. Mm. But before that, Joseph Kabila had a talk with Katuma Monkey, the private advisor, and he told him, I am sending you to, Kong, to, to Katanga mm -hmm. to go and get a package which uh, Moise Katumbi will send to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, on your way back, instead of using another airplane, use his, his private jet. So the jet which they claim has been crushed was a jet of Moise Katumbi, which they destroyed somewhere. Mm. Nobody crashed in the airplane. They destroyed it somewhere, and then they brought bodies of Congolese who pretended to have been in the airplane. One of them, the former Congolese Prime Minister Matata Mponyo, the former Governor of Kivu, uh, Marcelle Chisambo, and you name them, who pretended to have been uh, uh, dead or, 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 or grievously wounded in the aircraft. Mm. But only one person died, that was uh, Katuma Mwanke, mm. which was not true because Katuma Mwanke was executed in Katanga far from the airplane. Mm. Now, after executing Moses, 
Katuma Monkey. Mm. Moise Katumbi, Moise Katumbi called that Arab country's delegation to meet him. And they paid multi millions dollars to him. After receiving this multi million package, mm -hmm. of course, he signed reception of the money. Yeah. And he gave them part of uranium mm -hmm. and they left. Now, later on, the same buyers mm -hmm. came back to Kinshasa, introduced by the embassy, and they demanded to meet the president again. Mm -hmm. The president, so called president, fake Joseph Kabila, was angry. He said, I don't want to meet those people. Mm -hmm. They are bad payers. Because before they return, Moise Katumbi took part of the money, mm -hmm. little part of the money, mm -hmm. to Joseph Kabila. Say, what? He said, look, what? those people who came, they paid this, they paid this little amount. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, that, that's good. So let us share it. He gave Joseph part of the money. Mm -hmm. And he took part of the money. Joseph, not knowing that Moise Katumbi brought the biggest part of the money mm -hmm. and came to bank it in an African country that I know. I don't want to name it. Mm -hmm. An African country, and I know the bank where he went to deposit the money. He deposited the money and he returned and he went to crook again Joseph Kabila mm -hmm. from the, the small portion. Amount, yes. Now later, when the, 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 the delegate of that country came, came back again, mm -hmm. as they wanted to, to, to buy a second part of the mm -hmm. mineral, mm -hmm. Joseph, as I said, got angry. And he said, I don't want to see them. But with the negotiation, diplomatic the negotiation, uh, the officials at the embassy did all the best to approach the president to say, no. Uh, the first deal has been done. It has been done. Joseph Kabila said, no, it's not true. They insisted, finally, Joseph Kabila opened up his doors and his heart to them. He received them. They say, Excellency, we paid money. Joseph said, no. You are lying. Got, you are lying. We've got proof. We've got, paper. We've got papers. Mm -hmm. This is the paper. Mm -hmm. And this is where uh, Moise Katumbi signed. Mm -hmm. The full amount. Yeah. When Joseph Kabila saw the amount, mm -hmm. he nearly collapsed. This is what you paid? Said, yes, but this is, this is uh, Moise Katumbi's signature. Is that true? That is true. Telephone. Boom, boom, boom. Moise Katumbi, where are you? Mm -hmm. I want to see you here. Courageously, he went to, mm -hmm. to Joseph Kabila. So you crooked me. He said, no, you know, President, uh, I found that bringing all that money uh, in this country where the banking system is not good, was that good. So I went to keep that money uh, somewhere. I banked it somewhere uh, so that we could I could bring it back to you uh, later. Okay, it's fine. He returned to Katanga. When Moses or Moise Katumbi returned to Katanga, he resigned from his governorship of the province mm -hmm. and faked that he became an opponent, took an airplane, claimed that he was poisoned, mm -hmm. and he took an airplane he and, he went, and, and he, went, he, he went out of Congo, I think via South Africa, South Africa, then he went to Europe. That's all what happened. So the crisis between Moise Katumbi and, mm -hmm. and Joseph Kabila is the crisis of money, not, not, politics. not politics. It is the crisis of money because Moise Katumbi crooked the share of Joseph Kabila. That is the truth. So that's why we can see the banning of him returning home. That's why the Minister of Justice even there say that we don't want him to come here. That is one side. On the other side, yeah. they can't do anything to, to Moise Katumbi mm -hmm. because he's their man. The wife of Moise Katumbi is a niece or a sister to the wife of Paul Kagame. Oh, okay. She represented the interests of Paul Kagame 
in Congo. You see that? Mm. So they can't fight. Moïse Katumbi is there at the same time representing the interests of Paul Kagame in Congo. So it's a matter of just telling his, uh, his governor of Congo because the fake Joseph Kabila is just a governor of Congo. The real president of Congo is, is, is Paul Kagame. It's a matter of just telling no, don't worry, forget about the crisis, you and your friend. Yes, okay, yes. continue because Congo has got a lot of money, we'll mm. continue to loot. Mm. So they are all playing the same game mm. of Paul Kagame in Congo. They, there is no opposition between both, but there is only that little quarrel mm -hmm. of big money, and you see Kabila is almost mad because he doesn't want to tell this truth I'm telling to people. Mm -hmm. The truth is this one, they are fighting for money. You know, Joseph Kabila grew up in poverty in a country which is poor, Rwanda and Tanzania, these are poor countries, you see? Now, he, come to, he comes to Congo where he finds a fabulous amount of money of wealth. You know, yeah. he is shaking. He want, if only Congo was, was food, he would have swallowed the whole dish. That's how he is. That is Kab Kabila. Yeah. That, and all of them, even, even, even Paul Kagame. Paul Kagame is not happy with his small territory. He thinks for him to be called the real president. He must, he must grab the whole Congo, the massive Congo, and then he will be seen that he's, a, he's not happy. Hence, he wants to shift the boundary to grab Congo. Uh, they will know that he's a real Hitler, a powerful man. He's not happy with the house that he has got. We haven't heard about it a long time ago. Even those uh, fans or supporters of uh, Moïse Katumbi, they are not even aware about the situation. So, Obvious, we need to. If you need more, more, more information, just contact Mr. Kilele on a uh, cell number. M Mr. Kilele, the, the report says, I think one of the viewers asked me a question while uh, when uh, Moise Katumbi stepped into, I think, the border of Kasumba Lesa. Yeah. And he said, if really uh, the Congolese government wanted to, to arrest or they're still looking for Moise Katumbi to arrest him, since he was stepping there by Kasumba Lesa or the other side of Zambia, why they couldn't just organize the military forces and the police to go just and grab him? arrest him once are like creating scenes and scenes after scenes you know making people have even seen through the footages and images around the international news that people have lost their lives we got some injuries and so on some women and men they lost their lives i think one or two dead people we have known we have we've seen through the informations why the military forces and governments in place they could have just okay we are looking for you here you are then we catch him Maybe they respected the international boundary, international law, that they cannot uh, step into uh, other countries' uh, territory. Besides, the people who were there are not Congolese. He had mobilized his countrymen, Zambians, to come and create a scenario of a warm homecoming. Okay. It was not in Congo. It was right there at the border. Mm -hmm. You see? Because he knew that he couldn't enter Congo. Uh, but Did he know? He knew. It is all well organized. It is all well organized. You see? So, uh, really, Congo doesn't need him nor Chesekedi. Uh, these are cinema actors mm. they, they are shooting a movie you know in congo really? yeah they are shooting they are in hollywood mm -hmm. they are they are actors of cinema they are rambos mm -hmm. you see mm -hmm. all these people here kagame fake kabila everyone is a protagonist in this movie oh, yeah. yeah you find protagonist and antagonist and it is making the movie very tense until it will reach you know a climax we're just watching what will happen when the so-called antagonists and protagonists mm -hmm. uh, will meet, yet we know that they are the same person. They are the same person. We're going to have a short break. After that, we're going to close our show by uh, reflect uh, Am Jose Bolowal, the international one. So how the conflict between Moise Katumbi and uh, Joseph Kabila. So I think uh, we, you, you heard 
how uh, the conflict, where the conflict is based on. So it's, it's very, very strange. So we are about four months to go before we get to December. We want to ask Mr. President how serious, how much serious the DRC Electoral Commission are. We've seen and we salute the Zimbabwe government about uh, organizing this election in a peaceful way. So we also salute the current president who's going to lead Zimbabwe. But about the DRC, how serious uh, the, the electoral commissions are? Because about only four months remaining. Are we going to have a real election? Well, if they are going to have elections, mm -hmm. uh, what Congolese uh, people need is not election. We don't need elections in Congo. Congo has been under occupation for the past 22 years. If at all elections may take place in terms of uh, uh, preparing uh, new governmental candidates and a new system of governance, it mm -hmm. can only profit the occupant. Mm -hmm. Our priority is to kick out occupant and the thieves mm -hmm. who are behind them of the international community mm -hmm. uh, disguising behind the United Nations troop in Congo. We don't need elections in Congo because we have lost our identity, we have lost our dignity, we have lost peace and we are left behind in a developmental race. Mm -hmm. These are people who claimed two, three years ago that they had no money to organize elections. Mm -hmm. Now, under the so-called international community pressure, they concede a sort of defeat and all of a sudden claim that they want to organize elections in a period of five, three months. Mm -hmm. Congo is not a small city. It is a huge country. Even though we don't have good infrastructure, but if candidates have to convince around the country uh, they need uh, ample time mm -hmm. to crisscross the country, uh, reach the grassroots, mm -hmm. uh, do a groundwork uh, before going to polls. Mm -hmm. Now, we've got four months left. When will they get time? Uh, <laughs> to start with the propaganda campaign, uh, to put billboard, to speak to the masses, mm -hmm. uh, even though today the so-called candidates are submitting uh, their candidacy uh, to compete presidential elections and other elections at all levels. When will they get time to do this? It is all hypocrisy. Uh, it is an insult to white Congolese people and any Congolese citizen uh, like Jean-Pierre Bemba who goes to register mm -hmm. pretending to be one of the competitors mm -hmm. uh, for this election is a traitor because there is no time material to convince, mm -hmm. to speak to people. There is no time. Mm -hmm. You can't organize elections in a country which is occupied, which is at war. You find this is stupid of uh, a son of the late Chisekedi, this Felix Chisekedi, who is fighting to be a prime minister and now is trying to change the mind to be one of the candidates. He wants to be a candidate while his own province, in his own province, people are massacred by the same regime. Mm -hmm. Go to Kasai, both Kasais. People are massacred. Those who had chance 
have left and have crossed to Angola. Why can't the international community show refugee tent, refugee camps, as they were showing the, the, the Hutu and the Tutsi who crossed uh, Congo to come to Congo while the Kagame's army was uh, attacking Kigali mm -hmm. and the, the whole Rwanda? They must show there are plenty Congolese who have crossed the border to Angola and who are dying in abject conditions, who come mostly from Kasai. This is his home province. Instead of transforming himself into a rebel to take up arms against the people, who kill. people who are killing his own brothers and sisters and mothers, is going all around the world, globe trotting, to look for support so that he could become prime minister or, or president. You find that you're dealing with an idiot. Go to Kivu, where I come from. Go to Beni. Go to the city of Jungu. And see how people are being massacred every day by the Rwandans. With the international community uh, a blessing, the so-called United Nations troops who are killing people. So any Congolese who claims to be an elections competitor is a traitor, is an idiot, is a stupid like uh, Felix Tshisekedi. And the fact that him and Jean-Pierre Bemba went to submit the, went to register as candidate, uh, raises some questions in our mind whether they are real Congolese or not. Because a real Congolese, they are not the only one, eh? because I heard even Fayulu uh, is among the people who went to register. But it shows that we are not dealing with real politicians. We are dealing with traitors. We are dealing with people who have infiltrated our social fabrics and who want to perpetrate the occupation of Congo and the disappearing of Congo on the world map. But we will not give them that chance. We will not give them that chance. That's so unfortunately. Before we end our show, let's, we want to hear from you, Mr. Kilele. Uh, President Joseph Kabila returned from Angola. Any comment about his trip coming from Angola? He's been welcomed by the officials and authorities. Hmm. Well, you know, wherever he goes, this guy is looking for accomplices and support. It goes all around the world to corrupt people so that they could support him. Because he knows that he has never been elected in Congo as a president and he has never been loved by Congolese people. So he goes all around with trunks of money to corrupt people. His trip to Angola is nothing for us. It is only a disappointment because Angola and the so-called DRC and Congo Brazzaville are the same people. And uh, historically, when you go back into history and you study the Kingdom of Congo, it extended as far afield as northern Namibia. You take the whole Angola, Congo Brazzaville, Gabon, and, and part of Cameroon. Mm -hmm. That where the extension of the Kingdom of Congo was established. It is uh, painful to find uh, some African countries who, which betray, I mean betray their own brothers and are not promoting Pan-Africanism. It is not Angola which could help the fake Kabila to continue you know, remaining into power, clinging to power in our country because Angolans and Congolese speak the same language apart from Portuguese and French which are the language of colonialist 
We speak the same language. They speak Kikongo. We speak Kikongo. They speak Lingala. We speak Lingala. We are the same people. And uh, dating as far back as 1920, many Angolans lived in Congo. And during Portuguese invasion of Angola, many Angolans lived in Congo without discrimination, without xenophobia. Mm -hmm. And up to now, you find thousands and millions of Angolans who are in Congo. Unless they tell you, this is an Angolan, this is a Congolese. Without that, you mm -hmm. can't distinguish who is an Angolan and who is a Congolese. Yeah. We are the same people. Now, if President Lorenzo uh, is playing complicity with the fake Joseph Kabila, it is just a shame for Africa and for Pan-Africanism. Africa has got a lot to do for the benefit of its people instead of playing uh, the game of colonialists who are pulling the strings behind. People are suffering in Congo, people are suffering in Angola, and if leaders could only put together their head, uh, we wouldn't have reached where we are today. We are reaching the bottomless piece, pit where we can't solve our own problem unless we get aid from foreigners, yet we have got wealth, resources, uh, which we could uh, capitalize on and develop our countries. But we play the role of capitalist, we play the role of colonialist, and divide Africans. So today there is animosity between us and Angolans mm -hmm. because of the policy of uh, the former president, uh, who, uh, De Santos, and now uh, the new one is not showing any active role uh, you know, to help a Congo. He is playing the role of Kagame to keep this guy there. Yet rumors are around Sadek wanted to go to move in and kick out uh, so-called Kabila. We know that Sadek is feeding on the dead body of Congo to advance the agenda of the economy. We know that, and we can't expect anything from Sadek. We can't expect anything from the international community. We must only fight ourselves, because all of them are against us. They envy Congo. All are thieves and unreliable. Now, to conclude, Congo is cursed by the name of Joseph. You know, if you go back into the Bible, the Bible tells the story of a certain Joseph mm -hmm. who came from Israel and was sold by his brothers to Egypt. And little by little, he became the prime minister of the Pharaoh and uh, things like that, it seems. Uh, the fakeness of the name starts from there. It comes from Israel, sold to Congo, I mean to Egypt, become prime minister. It's not different from the Joseph you find in Congo. Mm -hmm. After the biblical Joseph, you find Joseph Kasavubu, our first president. After Joseph Kasavubu, you find Joseph Mobutu, mm -hmm. Joseph Desire Mobutu. Mm -hmm. After Joseph Desire Mobutu, you find Joseph Kabila. Mm -hmm. Always this is Joseph, 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 yeah. Joseph, yeah. Joseph. Yeah. And all of them, most of them fake. Joseph Mobutu, not really a Congolese, is a guy whose father and mother came from Togo, born in Congo, Brazzaville, he became present in Congo. Mm -hmm. Now we have got another fake, Joseph. idiot and illiterate Joseph Kabila. Always Joseph, 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 Joseph. <laughs> we are cursed with this Joseph from the Bible. Joseph, 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 Joseph. <laughs> we are cursed. <laughs> All right, so that brings us to the end of our, our show and our uh, chat with uh, the President of uh, Congolese National Party, Ms. Ms. Mr. Son Excellency, Mr. <laughs> Kilele Jemadari. Thank you so much for being part of the program. So if you need to know more 
from the show or you got some questions we did understand throughout the show so you are more than welcome to contact mr president kilele on his cell number which is going to be you can see on the screen thank you to jamari directing this program thank you to the coordinator francine gembe from uh, belgium in brussels thank you for your time we really appreciate it so we'll keep on in touch of facebook let's conversation continue until next time stay blessed and uh, we know and we believe that congo will be part of the greatest country soon and very soon thank you